package contains the Solar City Solutions. We're in Niteroy at the Cresce, the daycare center, whose owners are building the school with Luis Felipe Vasconcellos from Architecture for Humanity uh, that will have the Pushin biodigesters that will turn their cafeteria waste and toilet waste into clean burning biogas and nutrient-rich fertilizer. We also have Fiora here, who is from the organization of the organic uh, agriculture, uh, urban organic agriculture, does three of the markets here in Rio that produce the high quality food so that people can live a healthy life and have a sustainable environment. And we're looking at the Insincorator that Insincorator Corporation from Racine, Wisconsin donated to this project. They're also the sponsors of this project and they're paying for the Pusheen mold system that we're bringing in to build the big biodigesters for the school and for three favelas here. Um, normally, we have a problem with food waste in everywhere in the world because people don't know that it has such high energy value, that this is sunlight, this is stored solar energy, and it's available 24 hours a day, come rain or shine, 365 days a year. It's the only form of solar energy that's always with us. And when it's not with us like this, it's with us in our stomachs and it comes out the other end as toilet waste. So we always have solar energy, and yet people say, when are we going to see a solar future? It's not efficient. The sun only comes uh, every day, and then there's clouds, and there's rain, and then there's the winter. And then they'll talk about wind, which is a form of solar energy and being intermittent. The wind sometimes doesn't blow. Water, which is a form of solar energy in terms of hydropower. Sometimes there's droughts, and the water doesn't flow as much. Well, this is always here. The other problem with food waste, besides that it attracts flies and rats and smells and creates disease, is that people tend, in order to be clean in the city, they tend to take their food waste, and instead of throwing it into the garden like people will do in the countryside, they think they're being efficient by putting it in a plastic bag. But then they don't know what to do with a plastic bag filled with stinky waste, and so they'll throw that in the street. And a lot of our problems in Brazil, as elsewhere, are plastic bags that wouldn't be there if people had a way of composting their food waste efficiently. Right? So one way that you can do that and eliminate these horrible plastic bags that are ending up in the ocean and choking turtles and killing wildlife and despoiling and clogging up pipes and causing flooding, all the terrible things that are happening with plastic bags can be eliminated by simply putting your food waste down a trituradora, a food grinder like this insincorator. So that's what we're going to do right now. And it's very simple. This is plugged in, right? We have to hold this. Let me take a bite here. Um, we need a little bit of water but not much. And give me a little more water. And uh, would you like to do the honors? You can put your hand a little bit down. You can push it down this far and no farther. There is no worry. You can see what goes on inside. Yes, yes. Your hand can go to here, but not deeper. So it is fairly safe. Go ahead and uh, look, look straight down here. Look straight down at the you can see what it actually looks like in there. So let's take a look inside here. So it has these throw lugs that throw the food to the side, which is like a cheese grater, and it grinds and becomes smaller. So when that's done, a couple of things can be done with this slurry. Now you see the slurry here. This is finely chopped up. This slurry is usually balanced in its pH because it's a mix of all the different types of food that you have, some alkaline and some acid. What we do when we have a biodigester is we tend to pour the slurry into the biodigester. And when we do so, we start to get a bit of fertilizer out the other side. So there's been some evaporation. I'm not going to fill it all the way up, but normally you'll get the fertilizer out when you put this in when this rises up. Right now this is a little low as you can see, 
so you'd have to add a lot more water to get it up, and we'll do that. The other thing you can do, and come with me, is you don't need, well here, you don't need to actually compost. Composting is great, and that's the best thing you can do if you don't have a biodigester, put it in your compost bin. It'll never fill. You can use it all year round, and in northern climates, even in the winter, if you isolate or insulate the compost bin, because this degrades so fast and creates thermophilia. But you can also, in many instances, simply spread it right in your garden because it is pre-ground. And this is going to dissolve, uh, go away very quickly. Within three to six days, it'll be gone. And then you can, of course, you can cover it if you like a little bit. And you can, um, but you don't necessarily have to. You're going to find that almost no flies will come. Sometimes ants will come and find it. Earthworms will eat it very quickly. Or Susanos will eat it very quickly. And that's one thing that you can do in your garden. That's not the recommended procedure. A compost bin will, of course, make it have higher value added. But just want to show that you could never do that with the number of banana peels and the number of orange peels that we had. You couldn't just throw them in your garden. But this you can do. So the, the food grinder is a remarkable... Uh, is a remarkable device for that. But of course, the best thing is if you have a biodigester that you can feed every day, and then you can get methane out of. This one is, is empty right now, but in a few days, this will rise up, and then they will get some cooking gas, which can go into the soil. So that's the uses of the incinerator. Hope you'll uh, get yourself a food grinder, whether you have biogas or not, and stop uh, putting food waste into plastic bags, and instead put it in your garden. Thanks.